Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another comparison video. Awesome. That's right, friends. I am back again with another video comparing different versions of the same scent. This time, Dior's Hom. Or just Dior Hom, if you want. I have three versions here. We have the original Dior Hom Silver Stem from 2005. We have Dior Hom Black Stem from 2011. And we have Dior Hom 2020. So, I will give you a little bit of background on the situation. Um, I will give you the context, which is essentially the same fucking thing. I shall then proceed to compare these three fragrances to each other and tell you which is my favourite and why. So, let's get started, shall we? Dior Homme was initially released in 2000. And five, under the artistic direction of Heidi Slamain. It was part of his Dior Homme look. And it was a bit of a revelation when it first came out. It was... It was probably the crystallisation of the metrosexual man, the zenith of that kind of softer side um, of men coming out of the cave, um, being in touch with the feminine sides, and it fit in with the look, and it fit in with the overall aesthetic of the brand, and it was to... It was to quite a lot of critical acclaim both the look the fashion and the scent you know Heidi Slimane a year earlier had been in charge when the Privé line the Dior Privé line had first been released with Bois d'Argent Cologne Blanche and Eau Noir Dior Homme a year later for me took inspiration from Bois d'Argent. I think it's quite similar. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. In its utilization of iris. This softer, rounder, smoother, kind of more approachable kind of vibe. It's, it's, do I want to say it's prettier? It is definitely prettier than previous releases from the house like Fahrenheit, Jules, um, even Eau Sauvage. For me, it kind of crystallizes what Dior we're, we're trying to be and it crystallizes this kind of moment in time when men were trying to develop you know and not just be hairy chested mustachioed brutes who would just you know come in kick the ladies in the heels and try and carry them home you know some ladies like that kind of thing but this perfume for me is sort of like, perfectly symbolizes that kind of aesthetic, that kind of, <clears throat> do I want to say forward thinking, progressive, um, because it had been happening for a while. This to me just seemed like the top 
the, the, the high water mark of that kind of movement in fragrance. Um, I'm not big on fashion. I'm not big on um, the history of brands and stuff like that. But fragrance wise, this was very much a departure. Uh, the previous release, I believe, had been Dune Pour Homme, which was in 1997 and was a very different fragrance. But so there was a bigger difference between Fahrenheit and Dune Pour Homme than there was between uh, between Fahrenheit and Dune Pour Homme than there was between Dune and Dior Homme. Um, Dune right here, one of my favorite summer fragrances, uh, fig, fig leaf, slightly woody, sandalwoody, creamy, warm, beautiful thing. Um, but Fahrenheit was like this kind of oily, leathery, iconic, monstrous fragrance in comparison to both of these. Um, so you can run the gambit, you could tell Slimonic had come in and changed a lot and he oversaw the release of the original which is Dior Homme and it came first in this bottle this is a 50 mil example I have got 100 mils but this is the one I'm using at the minute it has a silver stem and as you can see it has Dior written Dior Homme I beg your pardon written around the collar this is very interesting now it has not just it written around the collar, but around the stem on the inside. I don't know if you can make that out. There it is. A little bit, because the more I tilt it, the more you can't see it. There. Dior. Written around the inside of the stem. So, the main way to identify the older bottles, these bottles, okay, is the silver stem. My bottle is a 2010, I want to say. The year before it was reformulated. Um, and it was reformulated by the newly introduced in-house perfumer, Francois Demachy. Um, this bottle has Dior Homme written around the collar but not on the stem. The stem is now black. Um, apparently the silver stem was to look like a dipstick on a car and that was supposed to look like a black tie. Okay, I don't have a bottle of the 2020, so, but I believe the 2020 basically looks the same apart from the lid. Maybe with some black outlines on it, you know? Uh, I just thought they were, I mean, it says 2020 on the bottle, you know, so it's hard to miss or on the lid, I beg your pardon. Anyhow, the scents. We will start as we, be, as we mean to go on with Dior Homme 2005. Okay, so perfumer for this one was before Francois Demachy came in and this was made by future Chanel in-house perfumer, Olivia Polge, son of Jacques Polge. Okay, so This is iris dominant. It's very, very iris dominant. It has, it has a deep purple iris, round and soft, fresh, a little powdery. Some lavender, which adds to this kind of freshness. It's clean, 
but it's warm and it's warmed by the mid notes of cacao and cardamom this use of iris and cacao i don't know when this was first done it might have been it might have been this or it could have been arpege pour homme because I got a lot of irisy cacao. It was done at the same time. These actually came out in the same year. But I got very similar vibes from both of those of both of those perfumes. Arpege Pour Homme by Lanvin and Dior Homme 2005. It's it's got a lot more apparent bergamot it's got a little bit more apparent sage it feels defined it feels well cut it feels sharp it has this Fresh, yet deep and leading quality to it. And that's provided by this. This cacao, ambery, slightly patchouli aspect. And these notes in the mid lead from the lavender and the bergamot at the top through the iris and then through the cardamom down into the cacao and the amber and the patchouli to a leather and it's a very suede leather it's a very fresh leather it's a soft leather it's not like an oily leather like Fahrenheit. It's not a rugged leather. It's a very clean, new, supple leather. It smells new. It smells like kid leather, you know? Gentle, soft. A little bit of powderiness lingers throughout the fragrance just to remind you that it's got iris in and the iris really is the dominant note all the way through um dior home 2005 very intricate smelling it has lots of different aspects to it it has it has facets and it feels like it has places to go and things to do it smells upwardly mobile it smells reassuring it smells intelligent it could easily be a chanel it smells like a chanel done in the style of a dior chanel perfumes to me up until 2011 or 10 with the release of Bleu de chanel always smelled from a bygone era you know they always smelled older than dior fragrances you know this smells like chanel brought into the 21st century it smells very 21st century in and of itself it's been 18 years since this was released i think it stands up Maybe that's because I was 19 and 20 during uh, 2005. And I remember the time, you know. And it smells like the Dior man. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Okay. Next, we will go to Dior Homme 2011. 
The reason I am covering these differently to the way I have covered comparisons before is because of the nature of the last scent. I wouldn't usually be describing each of these in as much detail if they were all the same, but they're not, as will become apparent in a minute. Well, maybe not in a minute, but in a few minutes. So, this is Dior Homme 2011. Dior Homme 2011, or the Black Stem, is... Dior Homme 2011 is the one that most people will be familiar with in the fragrance community. It was reformulated by Francois de Marchi and relaunched in 2011. He was now the in-house perfumer at Dior. And in the main, everything stayed the same. In, in feeling if not execution. So Francois de Marchi for me, his style is very different to Olivier Polge. It's a lot less intricate. It's a lot less sharp. It's a lot less gears in it and moving parts and much more like broad brush strokes. I know I'm mixing my metaphors there. I apologize. It's more like, imagine... Olivia Polge builds up um, texture by using lots of tiny individual brush strokes, kind of like Surratt, with his little dots, you know, millions of dots. Whereas Demarche is more like a Pollock in that it's broad, sweeping dollops of ingredients. Don't get me wrong, it's still a coherent perfume. It's definitely a reformulation, but it's not as... I'll be careful of using the word full. It's not as tight. That's probably the way. It's not as tight as Dior Homme from 2005. The iris is much bigger, which sounds like a, like a very strange thing to say. The iris is much bigger because Dior Homme 2005 had a huge iris in it. This is bigger. Much more prevalent. It's the same iris, but it's different. It's bigger. It's more voluminous. You know? Gone is the cardamom. Gone is this apparent bergamot the bergamot's much less apparent it's much more in, it's much less involved gone is the influence of the patchouli um it's the sage is might as well i mean it says the sage and it I might as well not be um it's a fat iris perfume with cacao, coca pod, like the powder of cacao sprinkled over this overweening, overarching iris fragrance. The leather in this is amped up hugely. It's not as big as Dior on Parfum. That took that to the next level. But the leather in this is much, much stronger. It's a similar leather, if not the same. It's a very similar leather. It's just a lot louder and a lot bigger. Um, if these two were machines, this would be like a Ferrari. This would be more like a Volkswagen. It works. It's reliable. It's sound. But this is more beautiful. And it's more intelligent. And it's tighter. And it, it it's more sort of... It has more finesse. This is more brutal, you know. It it 
if you'd only ever smelled this one, right, it wouldn't bother you, you know? And frankly, I've got quite a few bottles of this. I, there are some days where I wake up and I can't be bothered with just how, because I feel like I don't need to wear this fragrance because it's quite, it feels almost like it's too good for me. Do you know what I mean? And I want to just wear this because it's easier, you know? It's easier. You don't have to be as, you don't have to be as, as like, you don't have to live up to it quite so much, you know? It's fresh, still, uh, the leather in it's gorgeous. It's still a gorgeous fragrance, right? It's still absolutely glorious. Um, but it is based on that original Polish idea. And I think when you've smelled this, you will understand why I prefer this one in the middle as a perfume. The 2011 version is easier to wear. Um, it's stunning. They both are. Um, should you be paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds for the silver stem? No. Would I pay a little bit extra for it? Yes. Not that much though. Not what people are asking for. <sighs> the vetiver in this is more apparent as well. It's got this slightly green kind of creamy thing going on. And the cacao shines more in this too. And it just feels like there's like he's, he's added some kind of booster thing to it to give it this like lift. You know, like ISO E super, whatever kind of thing he's used in it to make it like louder and more. You know, the performance on this one, 2011, is probably stronger than the 2010 and then the 2005, I beg your pardon. Um, which is another reason to love it. But. My preference is for the original, you know, the 2010. This sort of fits in with my tastes, as we know. Now we will come to Dior Homme 2020. Dior Homme 2020 was released... I mean, it was one of the worst years on record, obviously, for obvious reasons. The famous illness that went around. Um, and they completely and utterly changed the fragrance. It wasn't that they reformulated it. It's a different fragrance. It's as simple as that. It is... As simple as that. It is a different fragrance released under the same name. And it fits in with a pattern of behaviour by Demashi at Dior. Whereby he took other people's work and laid claim to the credit for it. He did it with Bois d'Argent which was re-released re in 2017 and called a new fragrance, which it wasn't. It had the same notes, the same name. And the press release said that this is a new fragrance released by Christian Dior, made by uh, Francois Demarché. That's plagiarism, simple as that. It's plagiarism. It was in bad faith, I believe. And it... I don't really know what the reasons for doing that were, but it led on to it led on to this. This is Dior Homme 2020. It's a totally different fragrance released under the same name. So what he did this time is instead of taking credit for someone else's work, 
like they did in 2011 with Francois de Marchi uh, reformulating Dior Homme. In 2020, they just released something called Dior Homme 2020, which was a completely different fragrance. And I laughed when it was released because it's a terrible fragrance which bears the, the name on the bottle, on the, bottle, on the cap, of one of the worst years of, of, of fucking in, in a hundred years. You know, there might not have been a war, but it was a pretty shocking time to be alive. And then we all had different experiences of it. I will read you some of the blurb here. Dior Homme, a powdery iris and woody scent for men, was introduced in the original version in 2005 and then later came the new 2011 version. Notice the word new there. It wasn't new, it was reformulated. You can say and call it what you like, it was a reformulation. Anyway, back to the blurb. The 2020 version of Dior Homme Eau de Toilette is announced with the slogan, I'm your man. The 2011 edition remains on the shelves under the name Dior Homme Original. The new Dior Homme is created by Dior in-house perfumer Françoise Demarchi, who wanted to redefine masculine sensuality. The fragrance is intensely woody, warm and sensual. A virile accord of Atlas Cedar and the warmth of cashmere wood are pampered with spicy aromas. Quote, this, this new Dior Homme has an unmistakably virile signature that does not prevent it from developing tender, sensual accents. It basically draws... It basically draws the portrait of a modern man, unquote. Francois de Marchi, Dior perfumer creator. According to the perfumer, this is a fragrance overdosed with carnal woody notes and it represents a return to the basics, classic and, and simplicity. It is clear, clean, gentle and woody, but also slightly sweet and wears like a second skin. The new bottle follows the architectural design of its predecessors with a more prominent logo and perfume name on the plug. The face of the advertising campaign remains actor Robert Patterson. There are many things I could say about that bullshit that I've just read out. And I'll say a few of them. Trying to pass off old work as new work is the type of shit you wouldn't get away with at university. All right. You wouldn't get away with it at school. And yet they've tried to pull it here. It's not a new fragrance. This was not a new fragrance. It was a reformulation of this. And it was not as good. Okay. Demarche has made Many fragrances for Dior, many what we would call bangers or extremely successful financially fragrances. He's made some unsuccessful ones as well, you know. Um, but apparently Dior, 20, Dior on 2020 has not done very well in and of itself, thank God. I'm just applying some with this dabber because I refuse to buy a bottle of it, which should give you some indication of what I think of this fragrance. This video is going to be quite long, but bollocks. So, the notes. Demarchie's iteration. Bergamot, pink pepper, and elemy at the top. Middle notes are cashmere wood, which is a fucking uh, captive molecule. Um, supposed to be like this warm, nondescript, woody kind of, of effect. A bit like... Um, a bit like a blanket, but like woody at the same time. Atlas cedar, patchouli. Base notes, isoe super. Haitian vetiver and white musk. They have included isoe super in the notes. Just straight up, it's, it's an isoe super. You can buy isoe super for 15 quid a bottle. If that. Okay. All right, we'll start. Off the top, I get the alumi. 
I get some bergamot. And it's the same LME that they use in Eau Sauvage Parfum 2017. LME has this lemony, citric, slightly incensey, smoky bombast. What this indicates to me is, is that they bought a shit ton of LME and they wanted to just keep fucking using it and throw it in as much stuff as they possibly could. The LVMH palette must have been lacking, um, must have been lacking in moved units for Eau Sauvage Parfum. So the LME was just sitting there doing nothing, so they decided to use it in this. Bergamot and pink pepper, some of two, two of the most ubiquitous notes in modern perfumery. It, they're fucking everywhere. Fresh, slightly peppery. A little red. And then you get this kind of throw. You know when people throw their voices and it's like you know where it's coming from, but it feels like it's coming from somewhere else? It's got that. And that's the ISO E Super and the cashmere wood. Cashmere wood will do that sort of thing as well because it's one of these synthetic materials um, used to uh, push. And it's large as well. It's a big, big molecule. It's got a lot of shit going on. Slightly musky, um, slightly green from that bergamot and LME. Cedar wood, I don't get a lot of the cedar wood, actually. Uh, to me, a cedar wood is like Royal Oud or Impression Cedar Wood Heart by Ostens. I mean, I get cedar from this. I get that fresh, slightly woody kind of aspect, but that's coming from both ISO -E Super and the cashmere wood, you know? It's got this cleanliness, this kind of safe, fresh, inoffensive, non-divisive slightly sweet, woody melange of perfume. You know, it smells, what it's real crime is for me, even beyond the plagiarism, the piggybacking off um, fragrances that have gone before it um, with the name and the bottle and stuff like that, is the fact that it smells like every other designer release of the last five years before it. If Sauvage was an overdose of Ambroxan, Dioram 2020 is an overdose of Ice Away Super. As if that is some kind of goal to aspire to. You know? As if that is something that we should be happy with. It smells like everything else but made by Dior. And it's very clever in that respect. It's very clever in the respect that you will get to smell like everyone else, safe and... fresh and clean and you'll fit in and no one will laugh at you and nobody will go oh what's that you know they'll just say oh you smell nice and you will smell nice but nice is a four letter word like shit
you'll smell bland. You'll smell inoffensive. You'll smell like her ex-boyfriend. But at least it's got Dior written on it. Frankly, if you want this, just buy a bottle of Ice Away Super for 15 quid, like I said. It's got little flashes of pink pepper, which is harkens back to Sauvage. Not all Sauvage, Sauvage. Uh, it's got a little bit of vetiver with this kind of greenness. The Elemi is probably the most interesting part, but you can get Dior uh, Sauvage, Eau Sauvage Parfum, I beg your pardon, from 2017, which replaced the Myrrh with the Elemi, which again backs up my theory that they had a shit ton of Elemi and they had to fucking use it. It's, I, I, I am offended by this perfume. I am offended by this fucking perfume, right? Because I feel patronized by it. You know? They kept around Dior Homme original, right? I imagine he's reworked that. Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. I couldn't smell any differences, but I did only try it in the shop. Um... I didn't want to ask for two samples either. The, the lady behind the counter was absolutely lovely and decanted this for me, which is exactly what I wanted. Bless her, she'll be thinking that I think it smells lovely. How wrong she is. And it does smell pleasant, pleasant and nice, but you know what I think of the word nice. So to compare the three, I mean, I've tried to make the case for what I think and feel as I've gone along during this video, and I don't think any of you are left in any doubt about how I feel. I will go, I'm not even gonna rank that, cause it's shocking. I'll go two, one. This, you can buy from any other brand at a much better price point. Isoe Super Cashmaran Cedar Bergamot and Elemi. Elemi is the most interesting part, but I don't expect that to appeal to the majority of people. I know when this came out, it got trashed because they had taken Dior Homme away from us, we felt um, in the community. And there was a lot of uproar amongst people in the community I imagine people out there I imagine there have been people out there who just went in and said hello I would like another bottle of Dior Homme like I've always had don't care about reformulations just give us me fragrance that I've always worn expecting to get another bottle of this or a reformulated version of this and they were sold Dior Homme 2020 and they sprayed it on and I imagine they must have screamed I imagine they must have thought to themselves this is some kind of mistake, you know? Um, what's going on here? And maybe they've been in too embarrassed to go back. Maybe they didn't want to go back. Maybe they just learned to live with it. But I imagine there's been quite a few bottles sold like that, you know? Um, some men just want to go and wear the same fragrance all the time. And that is, I understand that I genuinely do as I sit here with hundreds of fragrances sat in front of you. But I do understand that, you know. Most people, they find one fragrance that they like. Maybe it's a little bit different to everything else. Maybe it's, it smells exactly the same as everything else, and that's what they want. That's fine. But when you pull the rug from under somebody, and you call something the same thing it was called before, but completely change the fragrance, not reformulated. These two are related. These two have similar vibes, all right? I can't help but feel, but in the context of the recent Dior perfume releases, this is done in bad faith. This has been done not to just deceive people, but to like, it feels almost like patronizing, you know? 
I'll tell you what's good. What you liked before, it's shit now. It's over there, we don't talk about it anymore. We'll keep it out for the people who used to like it, but this is the new thing. This is the, this is the new thing, you know? Here's the thing you should be concerned with. Here's the thing that we are gonna tell you is important. That feels like a lot like what the LVMH group does and Dior, and I'm more upset with it but from Dior because Dior is one of my favorite brands. I probably own more bottles from Dior than any other brand, maybe apart from Serge Luton, including different scents. I've got like 15, I've got between 15 and 20 Dior fragrances, you know? Separate fragrances, not including backups. And I've got a lot of backups. I've got a lot of backups of this, believe that. Because when this shit came out, I panicked. I was like, oh my God, they've taken our baby away from us. So I bought a few bottles of this. I've got plenty of this, don't you worry. I've got plenty of this as well. Um, but I was scared. And I panic bought the, the black stem. Um... Because I thought, I've seen it so many times when a fragrance has been discontinued or it's been reformulated and it's just not what you thought. I honestly, for the first while after I smelled Dior Homme 2020, I tried to search for the iris. <laughs> I thought it was there somewhere. You know, my mind was playing tricks on us. But it wasn't. It was Dior playing tricks on me. I felt offended. I still feel offended. I feel patronised. It's upsetting. So if you want me Markins, this one is a 10 out of genuine 10 out of 10, which, which literally changed the face of fragrance when it came out. This, I would say, was like an 8 simply because I appreciate the artistry. I do not expect the average, even the average member of Fragcom, not even the average consumer, to give a fuck about the really, not insignificant, but small differences between these two. This smells like a polish, this smells like a demarche, and polish is far superior as a perfumer. Okay? Um, in my opinion, I should say. And it just feels like that, that is gone. And the, the, the machine that is LVMH, Europe's most, Europe's most valuable company ever, is literally just all they are concerned with is money. And I understand that. They're a corporation. What else would they be fucking interested in? I mean, it's not quality of goods. You know, it's not quality of, of customer satisfaction. It's about brand recognition. It's about, getting, it's about getting as much money out of you for as little money as they can put in. And that is what that smells like. I saw a super cheaper than iris and cacao cedar is cheaper than iris and cacao elam is cheaper than myrrh which is why they changed dior eau sauvage parfum from 2012 to 2018 2017 the 2012 was made by demarche and it was great the 2017, I actually prefer it. Because I love the Elemy. I think it's, I, 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 I might be changing my mind on that one now, though, because I love Myrrh as well. That's a comparison video that's coming in the future, too. Um, it won't run as long as this one, because this has turned into a bit of a rant. But... I'll review... I'll review these two, Dior Homme 2005 and Dior Homme 2011, because they both deserve it. I keep both of these out, you know? 
Some days I feel like wearing 2005. Some days I genuinely feel like wearing 2011. It's less work. In my mind, it's less work to wear 2011. You know, it, it behaves differently. They're different enough that you can own both, in my opinion. You might feel differently. I feel you can wear both of these on different occasions. That, if I wanted something that smelled like that, I would just buy either a bottle of Isoe Super, and I do have a friend who just wears Isoe Super, and it, it, smells, it smells great in the air, all right? But you're getting 90% of that, what feels like 90% of that fragrance, you know? That's what that feels like. It feels like you're just wearing a bottle of Ice Away Super in the air. It's sad. And Dior are charging the best part of 100 quid for it. And people are buying it. You know? It's marketing and data-driven analytics, analytics, I beg your pardon, and how they know what they can do and get away with. You know, there's no artistry gone on there. It smells like... It would be a great fragrance for a 19-year-old, 20-year-old, 21-year-old lad. This smells like sophistication. It smells like a suit. It smells like... Chanel clothing, it smells like Tom, like when Tom Ford was popular, even though Tom Ford didn't really do anything as far as changing the needle on fashion's concerned. It smells like the type of fragrance you would wear with expensive clothing. This smells like smart casual. This smells like a night out with the lads or even a night out with your girlfriend, right? You get married in something like the 2005 though, you know? Um, this smells like jeans and t-shirt, if that, <laughs> tracksuit bottoms, joggers, you know, I've taken the best part of an hour, the best part of 50 minutes to sit here and rant and rave about this phrase, this is basically what I do best, isn't it, <laughs> you know what I mean, um, interested to see who watches all of this, um, I don't expect everybody to. Most people don't have an hour in their day to sit and listen to me seethe about the plight of the modern world and the modern perfume world and all that it entails and it indicates about us, you know? Excuse me whilst I hydrate, but here we are, friends. And that's that. I feel like I've said enough now. Dior on 2020 isn't worth bothering with, if you want my opinion. 2005 is incredible, but is it can be a little difficult, but it's worth it. And 2011 is one of the best signature scents for the money. It's better than a lot of stuff in their private line. Their modern private line is the 2011 version. Anything between 2011 and 2020 is spot on and just gobble it while you can. I don't know what the modern original's like. Um, mainly the same from what I can remember, but I think that's getting phased out. It will be phased out, I'm almost certain. You know, but there we have it. Bottle's great. Um, caps a little bit sharp, like you could you could easily hurt someone if you hit them over the head with one of them sharp edges. Juice is a different color too, but that happens over time. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you again next time. Bye.